What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to week 3 of WBE. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, Marcos, where are those really, really awesome looking slides made to you, made for you by your friend Mr. Danger Moss? Well, unfortunately, um, I ran out of time and I'd rather just get the video up rather than spending a lot of time editing those slides, because it does take quite a while and I didn't allocate the time for it today. So we're going to be on Showdown doing the introduction to this video along with the, the team building process. So this week we're facing Steph of Anime and her Golden State Glaceons. Now, Here's the matchup. As you can see, the team consists of Cinderace, Corviknight, Jalison, Kangaskhan, Galarian, Linoon, Rhydon, Rebombi, Riolu, I hate that little kid, Snorlax, G-Max, uh, Tangela, and Toxtricity. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of physical attackers, um, and only really like three super threatening special attackers, Jellicent, Rebombi, and Toxtricity, which like my Mudsdale kind of goes hard <laughs> versus the, uh, the entire team except for like Tangela, Rebombi, and Jellicent, but it, it can deal with them with proper investing. Now this week, we kind of learned for our, from our mistake facing Eren. Uh, we didn't want to prep too hard on the Trick Room Sun offense mode, uh, it's a bit predictable. And also the team, as you can see, has many, many threatening physical attackers. Snorlax, G-Max, um, Kangaskhan, Cinderace, all these are very scary for my team. So we played a little bit more defensively this week, let, let me get into what we ended up building. So. First of all, we're using a Focus Sash Hitmontop, and that's because we figured that one of the best ways of dealing with a couple of these Pokemon would be with Endeavor plus Mach Punch. Also, the Fake Out Intimidate is really nice versus our physical attackers, barring the Kangaskhan. And I completely forgot to tell you guys, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, do me a favor, comment your favorite Pokemon down below. Alright, there's the YouTube spiel. <laughs> but yeah, Hitmontop is a very huge asset in this team. Uh, with the adamant nature, it's going to be two-shotting a lot of Pokemon on her side of the field with close combat. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Focus Sash is mostly just there because it'd be really nice to get things to minus one with Endeavor if we make a call on like uh, a bounce play or a max airstream. Next up we have Keyberry Mudsdale, and Keyberry Mudsdale and Charizard, these are going to be the absolute goats of this team. The absolute goats. We're running Protect High Horsepower Lash Out Body Press with 252 HP, 228 attack with an adamant nature, and 28 speed. The 28 speed is because Jellicent would naturally outspeed us outside of Trick Room, and I'd rather not take a Water Spot and lose my Mudsdale immediately. So I decided to run Lash Out with a bit of speed because, uh, it, you know, logic would tell me that her Jellicent would be absolute minimum speed for the Trick Room mode. And with this, we're able to outspeed it outside of Trick Room and go for max darkness for a KO. Now, the Key Berry and the Stamina, you might be thinking, Marcos, that's, you know, you know, you get plus two on your first Stamina hit and then you're at plus two, you know, you, you can be pretty physically defensive versus that very physically offensive team. Well, here's where the absolute cheese comes in. We're running a physically defensive cho support Charizard with beat up Will-O-Wisp overheat breaking swipe and the safety goggles because we're a bit concerned about like a chlorophyll tangla or even rage powder to redirect the beat up away. So beat up will activate the key berry and give us stamina on the first turn, effectively giving us plus five. Um, or if my Mudsdale takes a hit, we get up to plus six in one turn. Will-O-Wisp is really great for stopping physical attackers like uh, Flying type Cinderace or whatever it changes its type to, uh, Kangaskhan since it can't be intimidated. Overheat is just our best special offensive move. Um, as you can see, we just kind of dumped the rest into special attack. Uh, the speed is enough for, I believe, only Toxtricity because that's really the only thing on her side of the field that I truly want to outspeed. I'm not really concerned with anything else, so we're just outspeeding a base 75 Pokemon. And Breaking Swipe is great for lowering the attack stat of everything on the other side of the field. And we're running Blaze because there's no reason for solar power. We're not really going to be Dynamaxing this this game, I believe. Next up, we have Eject Button Klefki. This is going to pair really well with the Hitmontop and the Manectric, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, we have Reflect, Thunder Wave for speed control. We don't have any light screens because Reflect is really the only thing we truly need versus this team. Uh, switcheroo to switch out that uh, eject button for something on her on her team's item, uh, giving them the eject button and then we can combo into that to possibly stop a Dynamax. We have Foul Play just for general damage and because I'm truly concerned about the G-Max Snorlax, if it gets to plus 6 this will be a, a clean 2 shot I believe. So that's really nice versus that. And just max physical defense uh, for special defense because there wasn't really anything on Hearst of the field I truly wanted to EV this thing for. We have the Mandibuzz with Iron Defense, Foul Play, Snarl, Roost, Overcoat to prevent Rage Powder, and Sleep Powder, etc. And a Citrus Berry. The reason I EV'd it this way is because this Mandibuzz will be able to, if I get an Iron Defense off and I get Reflect off with Klefki, uh, it actually creates a situation where 
max facade, the uh, max replenish coming off of plus six Snorlax from a foul play, will bring me down to about 50%. I get my Citrus Berry, and from there it becomes a 3-shot on Mandibuzz, so it's a 3-shot at plus 6 um, from that Snorlax onto my Mandibuzz, uh, where I can foul play them twice for the KO, which is really, really good. Snarl is super great for stopping the special attackers in her side of the field, like the Jellicent, the Rabombi, etc. And Mandibuzz, honestly, just a really nice matchup versus this team. The bulk is super important. And finally, we have Life Orb Offensive Lightning Rod Manectric. Uh, it I think is going to come in pretty clutch. It's only truly offensive move is Rising Voltage, which is all we really need. Uh, I decided to go with a Modest Nature, 252 Special Attack, 4 HP, Max Speed, uh, with a Life Orb, because I don't want this thing to be a passive support. I would like it to be an offensive option versus her Corviknight, if need be. Uh, and Rising Voltage, if I go for Max Lightning a couple of times, Rising Voltage becomes double base power because of um, Electric Train, which is really, really good. So yeah, uh, with that out of the way, do me a favor, guys. Pick up your Chicago Black Flock merch if you haven't already done so. Leave a like in the video, join the Discord, do whatever you want, and let's go ahead and get into the battle. I will see you guys over there. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing our week 3 WBE battle versus Stuff of Anime and her team, the Golden State Glacians. That's actually a really clever name to be honest, like I, I'm kind of jealous. Like I have Chicago Black Flock, which is, you know, a, a little bit of a take on Chicago Black Hawks, but I think hers is just, it just rolls off the tongue so well. But yeah, um, today I decided to do the intro uh, in post, I guess, so um, I don't feel like talking about the team now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into the battle. You guys already saw how the team is built, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I feel like I brought a really, really cool team this week with all those strange support options. Like, support Charizard for some reason just felt ideal, which it should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun this week. I'm mostly just concerned about that, that Snorlax that she's got. Alright, so, ooh, so we don't have to deal with the Snorlax, in fact, it looks like her Trick Room mode is pretty weak, so, um, yeah, okay, this actually is really, really good. I can lead off Charizard Hitmontop, feigning a Dynamax turn one, and I can go Mudsdale. Okay, okay, this doesn't look awful, this actually doesn't look awful. Alright, so, Mudsdale in the back. Um, and I think my last Pokemon, I kind of want to go Mandibuzz to help deal with things like the, um, the Jellicent and other things, but I also feel like Manectric wouldn't be a bad option in case we end up having to deal with those Water and Seal types in the back, the Corviknight in particular. So I think game one I'm going to go Manectric just so my, just so all my eggs aren't in the uh, Mudsdale basket, but let's go ahead and get into it. I'm, I'm really excited for this. The Rabombi is kind of interesting because usually you would see like a speed swap strat. Uh, for all I know, she might end up going with like a, a speed swap water spout strat with that Jalsync, which could be a huge, huge issue. Because if that Jalsync gets really fast, um, I'm kind of in big trouble. Alright. what she's brought game one. Kangaskhan Cinderace. Okay, I actually... I think I like this lead quite a bit. Let's see what the Kangaskhan's ability is. Is it inner focus? Okay. So this could be a little bit problematic. Um, I'm glad we did get the attack drop on the Cinderace though. So what I want to do here is the Kangaskhan can't get faked out and I have a feeling that she's going to anticipate a uh, Dynamax from my Charizard. So, here I want to go hard into Mudsdale. And I'm going to attempt the beat up into the Mudsdale, game one. <laughs> We're just going to go for it immediately. I do have the Focus Sash on the uh, Hitmontop, so I, I don't want to lose that immediately. I feel like that would be really useful game one, and especially with all these physical attackers. Um, Hitmontop could be really, really good. There's the Dynamax, just as I thought. Now, hopefully we don't see a double into the Charizard. That would be the worst case scenario.
I'm hoping to catch a fake out into my uh, blood steel if anything. There's the fake out, Mudsdale. Yes, beautiful. So we do get our stamina boost. And we're gonna go ahead and eat our Keyberry. Boosting our defense even more. Hopefully we catch a max airstream into this Charizard here. Because we are calc to live that. There it is. Beautiful, this is going perfect. They do get an attack boost on that Kangaskhan. And we get to beat up this Mudsdale. Plus five defense. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> Alright. Now, this is actually a pretty sweet spot for me. Because Mudsdale is probably the center of her attention here, and what I can do is I can go for, um... I could Will-O-Wisp into this Kangaskhan, but I'm a little bit concerned I'm going to take a lot of damage here. Um... Let me think. Manectric in the back looks really, really good. I think it's in my best interest just to go for this Max Quake to boost my special defense in case something comes out later. Because they're, they're not doing any damage to this thing anymore. I'm gonna max quake into that um into that Kangaskhan. What Pokemon does she have in the back? Nothing really for Charizard to handle on its own. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt a breaking swipe. Just to lower that attack on the Kangaskhan a bit. Cause it is intimidate immune, but it's not breaking swipe immune. This mode seal is about to be a huge threat to her team. There's the max darkness trying to lower my special defense. That's fine, it's just gonna go back up to normal here. Let's see what we catch with this uh Charizard. Hopefully nothing too strong. Ooh, there's the rock slide. Mudsdale avoids it. I don't mind losing the Charizard yet. Or, I don't mind losing the Charizard right now, it's perfectly fine to be honest. Here's the Max Quake, it should be doing a pretty big amount of damage. Yeah, okay, this Body Press is going to do chunks later on. Special Defense is back up. Alright, um, here I can go Hitmontop, because the Mach Punch, I believe, is in range to knock out that thing. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm really hoping it's within Mach Punch range, because they could double into me and that could be really annoying. I don't feel like taking a Max Airstream. We did intimidate that Cinderace though, which is really nice. Alright, um, here... I feel like there isn't a situation where they don't just go for the, um, the Max Airstream into the Hitmontop. I'm not certain if this KOs, but I'd rather go for two... I'd rather have to go for two mock punches than one close combat and end up not being able to do anything. So here we're going to max Quake once more into the... No, because they're going to max Airstream. They should. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go for a max Knuckle. Mm. I think we get the most out of Darkness, actually. Yeah, alright, and I'm going to mock Punch into the Kangaskhan, just in case. Yeah, there's the Withdrawal. That's fine. Let's see if we catch anything. The Corviknight? Alright. That's going to be a, a little bit annoying. <laughs> Ooh, if we catch this Jellicent, I'm going to be so happy. Yes! We caught the Jellicent. We caught the Jellicent. That's like the biggest threat to my team right now. And this should do chunks. Ah, <laughs> we just get the KO. Beautiful. Was that a crit? It was not. We do get a special defense drop, but that shouldn't matter for the rest of the game. This this Mudsdale is going in. This Mudsdale is going in, and there isn't anything that she can do about it, barring a crit. Which, granted, is still possible. It is still possible, and it is very scary. But we also keep our Focus Sash. So we might be able to endeavor something for a win. 
And my body press is gonna do chunks to this um to this Corviknight. There's the Kangaskhan. I'll go ahead and I will There's no reason to boost my special defense anymore, so I'll just I'll just max knuckle into the Kangaskhan slot. And I can go into my Manectric here expecting a fake out. Yeah, this, this Mudsdale is a huge threat. <laughs> I'm so happy we got that on the Switch. I was like, there's no way that they're staying in with the Kangaskhan, or anything really. Like, I was like, they have to switch something out. And the only safe play was the Max Darkness. So we're going to keep that guy for our Intimidate later. Or even just the Fake Out pressure. Send in Manectric. There's the Fake Out. That's fine. We preserve our Focus Sash. And there's an Attract. Oh my god, if this if this comes into play, I'm going to be so annoyed. Don't you dare. Don't you dare, Mudsdale. Oh my god. Mudsdale, no. <laughs> Not like this. I don't want this to actually happen. <laughs> um, I do threaten a lot on that Corviknight. And I can just start clicking body press. In fact, I think I just focus down the Corviknight here. Er, mm. I can probably just body press into the Kangaskhan pretty safely. And uh, Rising Voltage is a huge threat in the Corviknight. Mm, yeah, we'll do that. Kangaskhan, I'm thinking, is probably Assault Vest. Since it was carrying Rock Slide, it was likely meant to eat a hit from the Charizard. I really don't like that attract tech, the, <laughs> the attract tech, I, I misspoke, the attract tech. <laughs> attract tech, it's, it's a little bit of a tongue twister. There's the rising voltage, this should do a chunk. Ooh, nearly KOing actually. There's the brave bird, that should just knock itself out. Eh, not quite. The sooner this thing's gone, the sooner I can get my muds deal to be useful again. There we go, alright. Beautiful. Let's see if we get the body press KO. This Mudsdale is such a huge threat for them. Alright, and there's the Cinderace. Not too concerned about the Cinderace. Um, I think what I do here is I protect my Mudsdale. Because then I have Fake Out Pressure the next turn, and I just go for the Rising Voltage into this Corviknight. Hopefully KOing it so we don't have any more turns for them to possibly crit. There's the Protect. There's the Pyro Ball. Ooh, okay. Well, we still have the Fake Out Pressure, which is nice. And the Intimidate. The Roost, okay. Oh, this is going to be an annoying endgame. I can feel it. This is going to be a very annoying endgame. <laughs> Alright, let me send in the hitmon top here. It should outspeed the Corviknight. Get an Intimidate off. I feel like they're going to bounce. Yeah, I definitely feel like they're going to bounce here with their, um, with their Cinderace. So what I can do here is I can go for a Body Press into the Corviknight and a Fake Out. And that's probably my best play. I just have to land one body press, really. Or at least get it in range for Mach Punch. But wow, that attract is going to be super annoying. What, what's the odds? I think it's like 50-50? Or maybe 30%? I don't know, it always feels like it's more than 30%. <laughs> I do not feel like losing to RNG. Because this, uh, this Mudsdale is a set amount of health. And if it ends up coming down to me getting crit, I'm going to be so upset. There's the Fake Out. There's the Bounce. Called it. Come on, Mudsdale. You just have to land this. Yes, okay. So that should be a game. That, or that should be the game there. Ooh, alright, well that's in that's in mock punch range, so we don't have to worry about that. I'll go ahead and I'll body press into the Cinderace as it comes down, and I'll mock punch into this uh, Corviknight. 
I don't feel like playing games here, and if uh, if my Mudsail gets immobilized any longer, it's going to be a bad thing for me. There we go, that's Shikeo. Beautiful. And barring any crits, I don't think there's a way for Stephanie to win this game. There we go. No longer mobilized by love in this body press Shikeo. Ooh, okay. Well, I forgot that they're flying type. Uh, but that shouldn't matter. Because I can just... Uh, yeah, I can just body press again. Doesn't matter. And mock punch. Considering how much that did, that should be my safest play. Dang, the key berry really came in clutch there. Now I have to think about this. How would how would Stephanie adjust her her game one plan, um, and what should I do to counter that? Because I don't have to go Mudsdale next game, even though it worked perfectly fine this game. Like I have to think about like what she's thinking. There's the Pyro Ball. How much is that going to do? I want to see how much that does to the Mudsdale. Watch this actually crit and KO. I'm going to be so sad. No, into the Hitmon top. That should be game then. Because they just changed the fire type. There we go. All right. So we do pick up game one. So how do we adjust here? How do we adjust here? Let me send her a, a GG game one. <laughs> GG game one. All right. So how do we adjust? Just to make sure we she doesn't like counter, you know? And yeah, I'll take that lead card. Put the same rules. I think she's going to be a lot more wary of the Mudsdale, for sure, considering how much it messed up her team. Um, so, let's do this. Let's do this. I have to look at her team one more time. So her counter to that Mudsdale lead would probably be just leading off with the um, Jellicent, right? Mandibus does tons of damage to her team, like just the same way that my other mons did. So what I could do is I could start setting up uh, iron defenses with my Mandibus and just snarling her leads. I'm going to try this. She definitely wants to lean into that um, Jellicent though. I feel that. I feel like she's going to lean hard into the Jellicent uh, game plan. Hmm. Let me try this. We're gonna go Mandibus hit on top. We're gonna bring the Manectric in the back because it deals with the Jellicent pretty well, and so does Mandibus. And Klefki. Yeah, that should give me because th this is essentially just another really defensive option. Um, however, with <laughs> with a lot of uh, ways to just sort of wall hits, and Mandibus is a huge threat to her team. Like, coaching Riolu, don't get me wrong, that could be really, really annoying. But the reason I'm leading off with the Hitmon top here is because if she doesn't lead off with the um, Kangaskhan, I'm actually in a super, super good spot. And even if she does, I mean, I can threaten with close combat. Riola Cinderace. Okay, cool. That's actually probably the ideal lead. So Riola is pure fighting type, right? Here's what I'll do. I can fake out Riolu and set up an iron defense. Or do I do this? I think I do. I'm going to set up an iron defense and fake out the Riola. That should break a Sash or Eevee Light or whatever she's running. And because the Cinderace is at minus one, um, 
If I get this iron defense off, it's going to be very, very difficult for her to outpace me even with coaching. And if it's Focus Sesh Riolu, then uh, Mach Punch should do chunks as well. There's the Withdraw, okay. Into the Jellicent, that's fine. I'm going to set up my Iron Defense, I have Snarl. And there's the Bounce, okay, this is going pretty well, Alan, honestly. This is going pretty well. I can preserve my, um, preserve my Focus Sesh here. Get my Iron Defense off. I could go for two, uh, however, I'm a little bit scared of a Trick Room. I think it's in my best interest just to Snarl here. Lower the Special Defense. And I can go hard into Klefki, start setting up a couple of... I <laughs> start setting up my options here. Um, no, I don't go Klefki, I should go Manectric every time. And the reason I'm going Manectric is because Klefki is carrying the Eject button, so if I just wasted my Eject button, uh, that wouldn't be ideal. Get the Manectric. Now I have two Snarl Pokemon. This bounce shouldn't do too much. Ooh, and we avoid too. Let's see what she goes for. Water Spout, I assume. The Will O Wisp. Okay, I'm fine with that. Um, I think I'm fine with that actually. I should be fine. Because now I threaten this Jellicent really, really hard. Hmm. Let me Iron Defense again. Kind of wish I had Volt Switch. Um, but it doesn't look like... She doesn't have a Ground Type, right? So there's no real switch into this hit. But I kind of need to keep the Manectric healthy. I think we might have to Dynamax Manectric. Yeah. I think this is the turn we Dynamax Manectric just to hit everything. And I'll go ahead and I'll go for my Max Lightning into the Jellicent. Because Cinderace isn't hard to deal with, uh, now that we have this uh, Mandibuzz at essentially already plus two. There's the Withdraw on the Jellicent. I'm hoping to see the Riolu. Yes, okay. This Rising Voltage is going to do some disgusting damage soon. As they opt not to Dynamax the Cinderace, that or the Cinderace is pretty slow. Because I'm running a modest um, electric. Let's see what they go for here. The Pyro Ball shouldn't do too much at minus one. Ah, eh, it does a decent amount. Max Lightning. Ooh, and we nearly pick up a KO. Hmm. I mean, the coaching is pretty obvious here. Yeah, I think the coaching is pretty obvious. So what I could do here is... I could go for a foul play onto this Riolu and max guard on this turn. Because they're going to coach their, their Cinderace for sure. But I have to keep this Manectric alive. And Rising Voltage is going to do tons of damage soon. I just don't feel like taking a Pyro Ball. Or uh, what is it? Just a, just a Max Fire, Max Flame. Is that what's called? Max Flare? I always forget the names of these max moves. There are so many. One for each type, and then like 20 other variations. As they opt not to Dynamax, and they Sucker Punch. Okay. Rain Dance? That's fine? Yeah, that's fine. Because <laughs> I have a, a Rising Voltage with this thing's name on it. Let's see, if a Robombi comes in here, I'm going to go ahead and make a call. So if if they bring in a Robombi instead of the Jellicent, what I could do is I could go for a Max Lightning into the Cinderace slot, assuming that they're going to speed swap the Jellicent on this turn. So that, that's, the, that's the call I'm going to try to make. 
At least that's what I assume she's setting up by going for this rain dance. There's the Corviknight. Okay, um... I think I'm fine. Max Lightning does a ton to this Corviknight. But I think... Honestly... Hmm... Is it a throw if I send in my Hitmon top right now for the Manda Buzz? I don't think so. I don't think so. I just have to keep my, my Manectric super safe. I'm going to try it. This might be a throw. I really hope it isn't. I'm going to drop my defense in exchange for removing the Cinderace from the field because they haven't Dynamaxed yet. No! We got the freaking interruption. Okay, let me, let me DM. Okay, and we're back. It took us such a long time, like upwards of a half hour to recreate all of those turns perfectly, but <laughs> we're back. It was so, so annoying, but we're back. Hopefully that didn't put me on tilt. But this is the turn that we ended off on. Pokemon might be in a different board positioning order, but this is the turn we, were, we, were, we, le <laughs> we left off on. So, my play here is going to be switching the Hitmontop. And I am going to go for this Max Lightning onto the Corviknight. That is my play. Oh my god, we almost... It was such a long, long time to recreate this. And if we disconnect again, I'm going to be so upset. Because I have work in like a, an hour here. Alright, back where we were. <laughs> I'm going to intimidate this. I don't mind getting minus one on my... Um, I don't mind getting minus one on my Hitmontop, I just want to land a hit into that Corviknight because I feel like it might not have Protect. There's the Sucker Punch. He's gonna, <laughs> They're going to turn Dark-type. It's going to be going right into the Minectric slot. Going to be doing a decent amount of damage, but I should pick up a KO on this Corviknight now. And I take some Life Orb damage. So now all that's left is the stupid Jellicent. <laughs> that is it. So. The Cinderace is locked in at minus two. The only way it can raise its attack is by max knuckling. So my play here is going to be to go for this fake out into the Cinderace and attempt a rising voltage into this Jellicent for the KO because that should definitely KO barring a berry. I feel like the, the Cinderace would Dynamax here, though. And a Sucker Punch would do a lot. There's the Dynamax. Who's it going to be? That looks like the Cinderace. It's the Jellicent. Okay, that's good. That's good. Because that means that my Fake Out went into the Cinderace. So as long as I connect this Rising Voltage, it should be doing disgusting amounts of damage. Fake out, and I think they're gonna target into the Manectric here, so I might be able to, um, I might be able to keep my focus sash. And we get the KO with the Rising Voltage. Okay, I think that's game then. Oh my god, that was such a long, long time to get this game going. And now I can reveal my tech. Close combat. I'm gonna reveal the tech here. Quick attack. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that was an adventure. Thank you, thank you, Stephanie, for being so patient with the disconnects and stuff. There was when we were recreating the match, though it was it was insane because we tried it a couple of times. One time, Stephanie accidentally timed out, and then the Jellicent missed the Will O Wisp, <laughs> which was kind of funny. <laughs> There's the bounce. Ooh, okay. I might get two rising voltage KOs here. Okay, maybe not, but rising voltage should KO. <laughs> Let me go ahead and endeavor for the meme. And I'm gonna rising voltage. 
depends who she targets into. There it is. Alright, so Rising Voltage will pick up another KO. Beautiful. Okay. Good game, Steph. <laughs> that was an adventure. That was that was truly an adventure. <laughs> uh, Alright. I'm going to say post-game caller, no. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do a post-game call. Thank you guys for joining me in week two of WBE. I'm going to go ahead and hop in a call with Stephanie here. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys there. Hello? Hello! Dude, that was... that I was I was talking in the... Like, when, when we were finishing up that game, I was like, this was an adventure. Um, it, <laughs> it, it took way too much effort to recreate the first, <laughs> the first couple know. of turns. I know! I don't know if I'm going to keep in, like, all of our attempts, because you guys will see, like, my face just drops. Like, I'm so sad about the disconnect. I was like, no, we were having such, like, a like a crazy game, and then trying to reconnect it, and then the Will-O-Wisp missed, and then, the, you know, having to make sure, like, the bounce missed. It was all, it was wild. <laughs> yeah, it, to, to recreate the bounce miss, we just, uh, I, I was just like, all right, um, sucker punch twice. That's, like, the only way we're going to consistently get the same thing. Which, by the way... F for that bounce miss. I was so upset. I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> give dude. it to me. Yeah. All right. So I, I have a question. Your opinion. Yes. Okay. The Mudsdale. Mm -hmm. what, what were you thinking that game one? Okay. I, first of all, I, we got to go a step before that and talk team preview because you brought all the things I was like, you're not going to bring. <laughs> like, I thought, for sh like, I don't know, like, I, I thought the Venusaur would come. Like, I thought there would be sleep powder shenanigans. Fun fact, your girl wore safety goggles, Cinderace. Like, I don't know, I thought you were going to try some sleep shenanigans. Oh, no. I thought you, with the Klepki, with the sunny day, like, I, there were so many things. I didn't think you were going to really bring the Manda Buzz. Like, I didn't think you were bringing Manectric because of my ride on with Lightning Rod. I'm like, you're not going to risk that, will you? Dude, all right, so I, I, had, I had to learn my lesson from facing Aaron the other week. Um, uh -huh. I, I lost to Aaron 2-0 really, really badly. Uh, and the reason that I lost was, like, my team, like, on the, on, you know, on the surface, it's like, oh, that's a Sun team. You're gonna bring Sun, maybe Trick Room. So I brought that, and I was like, okay, well, this didn't work. Aaron prepped <laughs> hard for Sun and Trick Room. Uh, right. And I, I go to my front office, and I have to look at Jamie Keen, who's, like, head of my front office, and I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. Jamie. He goes, yeah. I'm like, you were right. We shouldn't have done that because I, I wasn't <laughs> listening to him. And he goes, okay, we're going to do something else this week. I'm like, okay, cool. So we ended up building this really bizarre team that I, I was mostly concerned about the Cinderace. And originally we were mm -hmm. like, we can probably run Burning Jealousy Charizard because like, why would Charizard get Burning Jealousy? Everything gets Burning Jealousy. Mm -hmm. And then like midway through this game plan, it's like, oh, it doesn't get Burning Jealousy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, feels bad, man. So eventually we were like, okay. What about beat up safety goggles Charizard? Because we were concerned about Rage Powder on your Tangela. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, okay, the best thing we could possibly do is lean hard into Mudsdale and, and just hope for the best there. And, and when one... you beat up a Mudsdale, I was shook. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Dude, it, no, when you revealed a tracked Corviknight, I was freaking oh, out. Yeah! I was like, I don't want to lose to attract. <laughs> I was so hoping I would win game one on that. I was so hoping. It's like, dang it. <laughs> we just needed another move. And I was like, you know what? This is really Mimi. And I love to meme. Like, I mean, I'm trying. And I'm not saying I'm not trying. Oh, yeah. But like, I just thought it would be really funny. And so also all of my team is female. <laughs> just oh. <laughs> as like a fun little little joke to it with the attract. And just, in I mean, you could have had like a female muds down. I would be like, okay, it's over. But just oh, in man. case. I hate that I just, you know, I, I, I feel like, that's the thing, I, it's like, I read somewhere that somehow, like, most teams have, like, male Pokemon, so if you're gonna run a track, it should almost always be on a female Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the gender ratios just slightly lean towards male overall, mm -hmm. so that makes it more consistent. So yeah. I, uh, so, technically, an ideal team would be all female. Yeah. So, ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of upset that that almost happened, um, but no, um, game two, game two, I, I'm, I'm curious, do you not have protect on, like, um, on, like, any of your mons? Because I almost had no protect on my team either, I had to, like, sacrifice moves to put protect on. 
Uh, I did not run protect on a lot of things. Actually, you know, it's funny. I'm sad you didn't run the trick room mode because I ran my Riola with copycat in oh, the event I could reverse it, you know, and I knew that it would probably be smarter. Like my front office is like detect is probably better, but I was like in the event. Honestly, I in think in the event you do it. I don't think you could stop it because then yeah. you'd have to run protect. So like, you yeah, know, I, I was thinking like, yeah, if, if the Riolu has copycat, then I'm going to be in trouble for trick room. So we didn't want to do that. Yeah. But also, I'm so speaking, sad. did you have Trick Room on your Jellicent? I did. And it was minimum speed, right? Yeah. Okay. We were we were really scared of the Jellicent when prepping. So my Mudsdale uh -huh. has 28 speed EVs. So that wow. means... Yeah. So that would make it so that way if um it came down to Mudsdale versus Jellicent, you couldn't just like scald into it for a KO. So, because I'm running the max darkness. Um, right. I, was, I, I was, noticed that. Yeah. You you had me shook game one when you called the Jellicent switch in. I wasn't you even. I wasn't you even calling the Jellicent. I wasn't calling the Jellicent in particular. I was just like, there's nothing on the field that that she's going to let me max quake. Like either the Corviknight. Right. I was like, the Corviknight's going to come in or something. And it ended up being the Jellicent because I didn't want to go for max knuckle because I, I, I end up doing the most with, with, with max darkness. So I just kind of right. got lucky there. Oh my God. Because... You're right. Like when I was prepping for you, I was like, Jellison puts in the work. So I was, you know, I actually, I don't, did I show, I don't know if it got shown off when we DC'd or when we continued this game, but I had fake tears on the Corviknight. So I was really trying to set up the oh jelly. Oh my God, fake tears. But then you had the Manect. I really didn't think you would bring Manectric, which I, maybe I should have just put the ride on, on the team. Yeah. Uh, when, when, uh... I, when I slept on Manectric, I was like, Manectric could be really good here if it weren't for the ride on. And, yeah. I, and then I thought about it. I was like, I I mean, I have the Mudsdale. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say I could bring Manectric in the event that there is no ride on. Right. Um, and, and the funny thing is, did you notice I had Quick Attack at the end of that game? Yes, I did. So that, that's for two reasons. It was in the event of a Focus Sash on anything. Um, uh -huh. But even more, uh, even more than that, I am running the really dumb uh, switcheroo eject button strat on my Klefki. I, I would have hated you. I, sure I wanted to click there. it really bad. <laughs> I, oh my god, that's evil! That would have been so funny. I, I would be cursed with eject button. Oh my god. I'm assuming, did you watch my game against Aaron? I, I didn't get around to it, no. Okay, so he does switcheroo eject button me, and <laughs> it's so sad because game one, what happened is I knew, I was like, I gotta make sure this doesn't happen. It's a Whimsicott, like, yeah. so I faint, so game one, I faint into his, whim like, his Whimsicott slot, turn one to show, hey, you know, faint's got the higher priority, please don't eject button me, I won't let it happen. So game two, I try to be big brain, and I'm like, he saw me game one, like, I fainted twice into that Whimsicott, like, he knows not to do it, and he did. Dude, Aaron, and Aaron tossed me <laughs> up too, like, <laughs> like, I, I, I was prepping, like, like I said, like I brought a very, very predictable team, which is kind of bad of me. Um, but like game two, there was like a situation where there was a Toxtricity on the field and a Whimsicott. And I had a Mudsdale and a, no, I had a, I believe it was like Hitmontop and Klefki. No, Hitmontop and, uh -huh. and uh, Slowking. And I was like, he knows for a fact that my Slowking's going to drop to an electric move. But I know that he knows that I'm going to drop to an electric move. <laughs> so I stayed in with the Slow King, and I tried to go for a Trick Room, and he went for the greatest middle ground play of all time. He had, <laughs> he had um, Acid Spray on the Toxtricity, and it was Choice yeah, Scarf. Yeah, I saw this! Yeah, oh. so he just, he just knocked out the, the Slow King, and it, it would have also caught the Mudsdale. I'm like, wow, I just got... He, he just treated me like salad. I got tossed really hard. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, it was a fun set. It was, it was. I'm glad that we made it work despite all that pizzazz game two, man. That was like, I, I, not that I freaked out a little bit. I definitely freaked out a little bit about like when I saw your team preview, I was like, oh no, this is stuff I didn't prep as hard for. Like I really prepped for like all your other stuff. I was like, I'll make sure I get Charizard out of there, which is why game one, I was like, bye Charizard, please oh, leave me alone. Were you, like, in, were you in Assault Vest Kangaskhan? Yes, I was. Okay, I was thinking that because as soon as I saw Rock Slide, I'm like, that Kangaskhan doesn't have Protect, because if it's running Rock Slide, it's supposed to eat a Max Wildfire. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, that was my that was my mindset there. So I, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad I was able to call that because Kangaskhan was really scary. I can't intimidate it. I can't fake it out. Right. So the only way I was gonna be able to win game one was like I have to make the call that she's gonna expect me to Dynamax Charizard and just get in the Mudsdale instead. Right. Yeah. No. It was it was a fun set. I'm glad uh, we got to play. 
guys yeah. who, are, who are watching this in, in, you know, you stuck around for the post game call, do me a favor, go check out Step of Anime on Twitter and YouTube. And yeah, I, I'm very excited to see where the rest of the season takes both of us. Yeah, oh my gosh, absolutely. This is so much fun. And thanks for the post-game call. It's so nice to be able to like meet you over Discord. I feel like that's really cool. There's a lot of really cool people in this league. And so it was so much fun to battle you. If I somehow scrap my way to the playoffs, maybe I'll get to play you again, which would be really fun. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But yeah, with that, guys, I'm going to call it. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. All right, bye.